A crucial aspect of awakening involves healing our past pain. And this seems to be a natural process that unravels as we raise our vibration. This old energy inside of us is no longer a vibrational match to the person that we are becoming. And so we purge, we purge our past pain in order to truly embody our natural state of being. Spiritual teachings and schools of thought provide various healing modalities that are great and perfect for the people that feel called to practice them, but sometimes they can get a little confusing and kind of overly complex. So today I want to talk about a term named the pain body invented by a well-known spiritual teacher called Eckhart Tolle. And within this teaching, he offers a simple way of understanding our emotional pain and how to actually process it once and for all. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first of all, what is the pain body? Eckhart refers to the pain body as a collection of past pain that has become trapped in our energetic structure, otherwise known as trauma. He describes the pain body to be like that of an entity that lives within us. This entity is looking to survive and so it feeds off of negativity and drama in our life. Like a parasite, it feeds on us physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually. Now, emotion is energy in motion. So what we consider to be positive emotions hold a very fast vibrational frequency. They contain a lot of light and they are more of a vibrational match to um, our natural state of being. However, what we consider to be a negative emotions, they are more dense and hold a slower vibrational frequency. And because of the nature of their density and because of our inability to actually process these emotions at the time of their creation, what happens is they become stagnant, the energy stops moving and they actually get lodged within us. Now we can be reluctant to face the pain body and we can be reluctant to heal, but it is a necessity. I'm going to get into how to dissolve the pain body, but first of all, here is a few reasons why you should stop running away from your pain body and courageously face it head on to dissolve it. The pain you carry haunts you in many ways, including your thoughts and your mind space. The energy that you are unable to feel in your body actually moves up to your head and works through your thoughts. Our past pain will be reflected in our outer experiences as we see the same negative patterns play over and over. The pain body's need for drama may even manifest into accidents and we may end up injuring ourselves. It also haunts you in your ability to step into your purpose here and do your mission work on this planet. It affects your connection to yourself and the people around you. It may even manifest as unproductive behaviors, bad habits and addictions. The pain will block your ability to move forward in life, to be joyful. It will block your ability to manifest. Eventually, our past pain may even project itself into the physical world and manifest itself as physical illnesses. You will continue to create situations that will trigger your past pain over the years in order for it to be released. So you might as well face it now rather than later. How can I identify the pain body and recognize when it arises? Your natural state of being is one of love, joy, peace, presence, that kind of thing. So if any form of negativity, fear arises inside of you, it is the result of something that you have learned here in physical form and have kept inside of you. So the pain body, it manifests itself as negative emotion and then negative thoughts that actually fuel that negative emotion. The pain body can manifest as a bad mood or when you are triggered emotionally. Watch out for when you are irritated in some way because this is when the pain body is at the surface and it will work through your words, it will work through your actions, through your thoughts and what it does is it comes up, it comes up from its dormant state deep inside of you and it comes up to feed. It comes up to feed on this negativity and then it will go back down again, back to its dormant state. Now Eckhart describes the pain body to be surfacing and then going back down again and obviously we see that happen in our triggers and our bad moods. However, Eckhart says that some people can be living predominantly in their pain body so it's always lingering and dwelling at the surface of their being and we all know those people that are a little bit negatively inclined. 
Um, but he also describes the pain body as being something that can kind of, when it surfaces, it really takes us over. and We do things that we um, completely regret once it goes back down again. And maybe you've experienced this when you have, you know, kind of some kind of angry outrage. Um, and this is not to um, not take responsibility for our actions uh, and our creations here, but still um, it is almost as if we are being taken over by this entity sometimes. How does it survive? When the pain body is in control, you become a victim or a perpetrator, either inflicting pain on others or yourself. This feeds negative energy back into the pain body and strengthens its power, creating a vicious cycle. The pain body has a preference for unconscious thought. This is how it fuels itself. This is how it survives. It really kind of feeds on any negativity because it is a vibrational match to negativity. And when we feed it negative um, energy, whether through you know, experiences, dramas that unfold, through thinking, um, all of this, what it does is it just feeds it and it gets bigger and bigger and we fuel it. And, you know, the pain body, it can only survive in an unconscious environment, in darkness, in a lack of awareness. So that's what kind of leads me to my next question. How can we heal the pain body? Since the pain body lives in the realm of thought, we cannot heal it with thought. Thought only feeds it. Human beings have become completely captivated by and identified with the voice in their head, in their mind, that likes to narrate all the time. So over thousands of years, we have become addicted to thinking and lost within the illusion of identification with thought. So how is this relevant? Well, we have become so lost in thinking and that we have forgotten how to feel and we have actually created an aversion to feeling. We really have kind of lost our sense of connection with our own bodies and with our ability to truly feel what is actually going on in there. And so we must learn again how to be present, how to be present with our inner body, with our bodily sensations and how to be present with our pain in order to actually properly process it as it arises. Since the pain body can only survive in an unconscious environment, all we need to do is shine the light of awareness onto it. So when you experience the pain body working through your thoughts or your emotional body, take your attention into the inner energy field of the body and try to locate the sensation inside you. You may also identify the emotion, give it a label if you feel called to, but rest your awareness here on the sensation inside of you and resist the urge to think about it. Now this is super important and not always easy, but we want to resist the urge to think. Naturally, there could be a story that is unfolding that is coupled with this sensation that is going on with our inside of you within this emotion. But that is irrelevant. We need to let go of the story. We need to let go of the thoughts because the thoughts, they are only distracting us from truly feeling this energy and from truly allowing it to move through us. So prime, so our primary goal is presence and we want to let go of thinking and we want to feel. Now, every second that you allow your attention to rest on the sensations within your body, you are healing the pain body and healing your past pain. So when you are thinking, you are thinking feeding the pain body. It feeds off of your negative thoughts. It just gets bigger and bigger. But when you take your attention away from the feeling and you place it instead on the sensation and you rest in the sensation, the pain body is not running the show. It cannot exist in presence. And when it's not running the show, it loses its power and it dissolves. Now, this is why I do believe that the practice of 
the witness, cultivating the witness and meditation is so important because it will enable you to really let go of thinking and to actually help you find this stillness and this disidentification away from thought. It will, these practices, they will enable you to actually wake up and realize in the moment what is happening to you so that you can really take your attention and focus it internally and stay there and not wander off continuously. Now it may seem like the sensation and the emotion inside of you um, is getting worse initially and this is because we are directly focusing our attention on it and potentially finally allowing ourselves to feel it after so many years. So it's not that it's getting bigger or worse. In fact, the pain um, is actually, it's always been there, but now we're just allowing ourselves to finally feel it. Eventually the sensation will lessen and it will fade out, but remember to be kind to yourself and be patient with the process. Accept that emotions, they are normal and they are beautiful and they are all part of the human experience. It is okay to feel how you are feeling. You came here to this planet to feel emotion in all of its flavors and its colors. Have compassion also for the pain body. The power of love will dissolve it too. Remember the pain body itself, it could be likened to like an immature kind of infant or being really that's kind of just wanting to survive and it's doing it the only way that it knows how. I can't feel my inner body. So some people report initially actually having trouble locating the inner sensation in their body and feeling into the inner energy field of the body. This is perfectly normal. Um, if we've been living in our mind for so many years, it can take a little time to really become familiar with the inner world. And one thing that you can do right now, um, a little exercise, is to close your eyes and ask yourself, how do I know I even have a body? And well, it's because you can feel it, it's very subtly, maybe very subtly at first, but every single emotion will correlate with a sensation in the body. And it's just a matter of really becoming, as I say, familiar with the inner world. What about if the sensation is unbearable? I understand and I really feel um, for those that are going through some deep, um, healing and you know the pain body is very heavy and is manifesting itself into a really really unbearable uncomfortable um, sensation however it is the mind that is saying that the sensation is unbearable that is a narrative so you want to try to transcend that that voice because you can handle all that you are given now, if the sensation is really intense, one thing that I've found is that I can actually um, allow myself to breathe in, <sighs> breathing into that sensation, and that can help to really kind of soothe it. And you can also consciously breathe this energy and move it into the heart space. That is also another nice relief that I find. Um, remember that you can process any emotion and survive you can handle this um, I've actually made a video um, on how to be comfortable in uncomfortable sensation so I'll link that below how long do I need to spend doing this this is completely subjective of course sometimes um, the way it unfolds for me is that I can oh, I can realize, oh, I'm in a bad mood. My pain body is at the surface. Um, so I'm just sat there and I'm just observing it. I'm just very um, kind of aware that it is at the surface and that I could snap at any moment. So that isn't even, um, th there's no kind of time limit, limit to it as such. It's just that I am aware um, that I could very easily be triggered. I could maybe be a bit more impatient than usual. Um, other times when I'm re when I am very very triggered into my pain body um, and is at the surface and I'm feeling something, then it could just be um, you know a matter of seconds. Oh oh, I see the pain come up. I'm. 
present with it and it moves straight through me. But other times, if it's a deep wound, it can take longer. You know, I'm um, sometimes I, I take a hot bath <laughs> and I allow myself to sit there and feel it and be present. And then I let all the unplug the bath and let all the water go down the drain and visualize myself just letting go of all of this energy. Um, sometimes I go through periods of my life where I am clearly being called to heal. I'm being called to purge and release and dissolve the pain body. Um, I will mysteriously um, and divinely kind of orchestrate all of these perfect situations and experiences um, that trigger my pain body, bring it to the surface, wake it up from its dormant state so that I can allow it to um, move through me and to dissolve. And yes, during this time, it might require having a little bit more solitude, retreating from the world, really um, honing in on my introverted side and actually um, allowing myself to feel what's coming up. So that could be a matter of days, um, even weeks. You know, we go through these periods where we're just being called to heal more. Obviously, it might not be continuously in that sensation the whole time but we'll go through bouts in our um or periods where yeah we we might be continuously triggered and that's okay that's perfectly normal what if i'm busy now we live busy lives we we are busy people um we don't all have time to lock ourselves in a room for a couple of days and heal so remember here the key thing is awareness awareness dissolves the pain body so more than anything, you just want to be aware, aware of when it's at the surface so you can be extra alert um, and, so that, and so that you can just let go of the story, let go of the thinking and just allow yourself to just rest and accept that this is how you're feeling. And yes, that could be in the background as you navigate, you know, your boss and, and your meetings and, and um, going to the shopping mall or whatever, you know, you, you're still able to navigate your day but you are just aware that this is what is going on and you you know you can still be aware that there is this sensation within you as you go about your day obviously you're not able to um, really directly focus your attention on it and give it full focus potentially however again it's just awareness what will happen as I dissolve my pain body now dissolving the pain body it means that you are going to really unlock freedom in your life in so many ways and I've actually cultivated a little bit of a list for you based on my own experiences of what I've seen unfold in my own life since I have embarked on this journey of healing when we dissolve our pain body the pain body no longer has the power it used to it slowly fades and you prevent creating new pain because you know how to process it you also change the blocks that were holding you back seem to disappear things like fears undesirable personality traits behavioral patterns and triggers they no longer are there they kind of fade out slowly and sometimes we've changed so much but we don't even realize that we have because it's so natural for us now I've also noticed more of a connection to nature, to people around me, to myself, more connected to flow, and importantly, more connected to my purpose and more kind of enthusiasm to step into my purpose and my mission work in this lifetime. My thoughts are alchemized. They are generally just more positive. It's almost as if that, that energy of the pain body no longer resides in my mind space. Um, mind attacks are less frequent. And yeah, my, my head space is healthier. As we dissolve the pain body, we, yes, we dissolve our blockages. And as a result, we manifest a more desirable life. We see what we are beyond our pain, which reveals more of what we truly desire in life. And we begin to develop more healthy and positive experiences as we move through life. Through actually building experience of really disidentifying from emotion as they arise and seeing them as energy that is uh, temporarily moving through me, I've actually become more masterful with my emotions and I've really learned how to prevent adding to the pain body um, because I know how to heal it when it arises. So moving through life, I now feel more courageous. I'm not afraid of bodily sensation as much as I used to be. 
and not being afraid of emotion. It's a superpower because we can go into our fears and break free from the illusion of fear. And of course, I feel good. I feel like I've made so much more space within my energetic structure to really embody spaciousness, which is more of my natural state of being, my natural state of being beyond form. And one of the really rewarding things about dissolving the pain body is that actually, I feel like I'm also able to dissolve other people's pain bodies as well. I'm able to move their energy and heal their pain bodies for them. Now, just before we finish, I want to mention the fact that Eckhart, he does describe the pain body as being that of a separate entity. Um, and obviously it helps us to disidentify from the pain body and to really see it for what it is um, and actually recognize it. But obviously all truths are but half truths and there are different layers to truth. Um, and a deeper truth is that obviously the pain body is us because everything is us. We are all one um, and we are all um, deeply connected. We actually birth this pain body. Um, so therefore, you know, it is a part of us and we want to create a healthy relationship with it at the end of the day, loving every single part of us. We want to see the good aspects of the pain body, which is that through the pain comes awakening. Eckhart himself says that suffering is necessary until it is no longer necessary. So ironically, or perhaps paradoxically, we must create this idea of separation at first in order to really disidentify from the pain body. Um, and only then through creating this sense of separation can we actually really embrace the ultimate truth um, of oneness and illusion of separation. Ultimately, we must bring awareness and presence to the pain body because the pain body exists in time, in past and future. The pain body cannot survive in the present moment. Watch as experiences come into your reality to heal your pain body. Your soul wants to evolve. It wants you to heal. Be mindful of everything that plays out in your life and feel it all. Be aware of what is going on in your emotional body at all times. Remember this, be aware of it and don't get lost in the illusion. Cultivating an ability to actually disidentify from the mind and rest in the place as the silent witness so you're able to watch your emotions and your thoughts unravel um, from this other kind of dimension. Um, this really helps with this practice of the pain body simply because it allows you to have the spaciousness inside you to wake up. Uh, and realize when the pain body's at the surface and to be less reactive and things like that. So if you're interested in the practice of cultivating the witness, then check out my playlist all about cultivating the witness. Um, we call it witness consciousness. Um, also, tell me about any experiences that you have with the pain body. Um, any healing modalities that you'd like to share, any support that you'd like to share for other people, um, just leave all that in the comments below and if you feel compelled. And yeah, other than that, please like this video, share it with any anyone that you feel that um, may find it of use. Uh, please subscribe if you're interested in more content like this. And I'm offering free 25 minute one-on-one -on -one video chats if you want to speak with me. Other than that, yeah, have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video. Bye 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 bye. Oh.